And they're all amazing to me so far. Which one do I want? This is so exciting. Amazing. I love seeing these faces. And I think if anyone ever asks you what's the difference a year can make, you have just to look at the faces of our Apple School fellows. And you see from the moment that we met them at the airport, we saw them for the first day of orientation, which will be exactly a year ago next Wednesday. You see how far they've come, how they've embraced the cities they live in, how they've become active members of their host organization, and it's inspiring. For many of them, we've shared first whether they're personal achievements, professional milestones, and at times we've been together on some of the challenges. I think that's what's the most amazing, and that's what's really brought this group together, and that's what's really the power of the Atlas Core Network is that when you're with each other through the good times, but you also stand with each other through those hard times. Because I think through those times of adversity is when you really find out how you develop as a leader and how you really expand yourself. And I think a lot of these fellows have really pushed themselves in ways that they never thought possible or never imagined that they would. And it's really inspirational to hear all their individual stories. Of course, the most inspirational way to hear those stories is often through the voice of that first-hand perspective of a fellow. So what we do, we invite the fellows to select the one they would like to represent their class and really talk about the experience. And so this evening, we have the honor of welcoming a fellow, Shushar Malik, who was not here yet. Let me give you a little introduction. <laughs> he deserves a little round. If you're going to come up here, let me tell the good things about him first. So um, Shushar is from India, and he served as a human rights campaign. And he was actually, along with his fellow fellow TJ from Kenya, they pioneered a new partnership with Human Rights Campaign, who are our generous host, host this evening. And they pioneered this Global Fellows Program, because HRC decided they wanted to expand their international outreach. And what better way to do that than to bring people with first-hand experience from other countries to their headquarters here in Washington, D.C. And TJ and Tushar accepted that opportunity and embraced that challenge. And just a little background about Tushar, I think you'll quickly find he's a very inspirational, charismatic individual that can instantly light up a room. He's a published journalist, an award-winning filmmaker, a travel buff. And prior to the fellowship, he has a very diverse background. He worked at Career Campus, Equal India Alliance, and the Diversity in India Network. And over the past year, he has brought this depth of knowledge to Washington, D.C., and to this new role as a human rights campaign. So to share his experience and that of the other fellows, please join me in welcoming you to Sean. Great. Um, so I have a slide here prepared, so I'm going to read out from the speech. Uh, and I don't want to miss out on anything. So uh, first of all, good evening to one and all. Uh, before I start my speech, I wanted to make a slight correction. Originally, the choice for who would get the honor of speaking at a graduation ceremony was given to someone else. Um, I won't mention who that person is, but they asked me if I could do it instead, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> and now I have the excruciating task of summing up this wondrous one whole year, and, and much more for some of the fellows, much less for some of the fellows, into this one small speech. Um, how does one start talking about the end of a wondrous year, an era of change and change making? For a lot of us, this was a big step in our lives, having to leave our friends, families, and loved ones, um, some of whom are in the middle of crisis today. Atlas Core gave me and all of us fellows the chance to speak up, speak out, and work. Scratch that. Sir, remember that. And written organizations here in the United States, an opportunity for us to learn from them and them from us, and an even bigger opportunity for us to bring our, our worlds, our work, our passions to a stage where key world policy makers and organizations will not only listen, but also learn from us. This year for me has been life changing, coming from a grassroots background and feeling that no one seemed to care about young LGBTIQ identifying people from Asia and Pacific. Uh, this fellowship gave me a chance to be part of an amazing team here at the Human Rights Campaign. In fact, our office is just upstairs. I see this often. Uh, here in DC. And me and TJ, as Abby told you, were the first fellows here at the HRC. Happy to be the first. 
in a team that was itself not only in its infancy when it started, um, but it also gives me immense pride to say that we got the opportunity to help build the first ever program that focused completely on international LGBTIQ rights at an organization that for the last many decades was primarily focused on national work. It was a chance that the HRC took with us, bringing people on board who knew the work and lived and breathed it every single day, as opposed to traditional experts, as they say, in the region. And I'm sure that Ty, who I think is still on his way from his flight, he's really trying to make it for the graduation ceremony, and that was his advisor. And I'm pretty sure that Ty can vouch for the fact that it not only gave our team valuable insights, but also added to the overall organization in terms of diversity of culture, of language, and life experiences that we brought with us. It's been a weird year for me. Uh, when I came here last August, I was at a stage in my life where I was ready to change the world and learn more about how to do it. I go back two days later, now a criminal in the eyes of my country, just for being who I am. In December, India reinstated an ancient colonial era law from 1860 and made same-sex relations criminal again. And I remember being here when the decision came out. It is excruciating when the combined sadness of millions of humans deemed criminals echoes across the world and you are here, far away from all that, unable to share that emotion, to take part in that collective act, to fight together. For many of us fellows, it's been a similar year because of deteriorating conditions for human rights back in our countries, amongst other personal crises. But let me tell you that in times of pain and anger, it is these people, these fellow fellows, who have come together and been more than a family to me. This little global community of fellows that I've gotten to know over the past one year has been my support group, my co-conspirators, my party buddies, and I'm really thankful for that. So when you all, and you all get a moment during this crazy busy day, um, just hug and thank someone who made your year memorable. On that note, um, I would like to show a small video that I prepared of how my year was. Um, so, yeah. All right, here it goes. Now it's time to go away. This is 
suffer a lot of loss, but I'm going to remember all the amazing moments that I shared with everyone. <laughs> a wondrous year of being able to dance, party, learn, to share, enjoy the world with everyone. And it all started somewhere, and it all has to end somewhere, unfortunately. But I would really cherish this. This year has been wonderful and deep. It's really taught me a lot more. It's changed me as a person. And it is hard to see. As our logo says, change your perspective, change the world, and that is what this year has been a part of. Now, on to the slightly fun part. Um, here's a not very exhaustive list of things that I feel that all of us as Gen Z has, have learned this year. Number one, people will stop their cars and let you cross the road. Good luck surviving the road back home. <laughs> the art of schmoozing in DC is an acquired taste which involves a lot of drinking and many faux pas, as long as you're not the one who's making them. It is cheaper and easier to fly home for a week and get major surgery done than to have an appointment for a consultation with a doctor here and get reimbursed by the insurance. <laughs> every single person, and I mean every single person on our fellowship is doing something extremely amazing and passionate. And you keep wondering if there's any other place in the world where you'll be able to spend a year with a mixed pack of such awe inspiring individuals. If you haven't had Suzanne Bubba, then you haven't had Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not serious. You will find love, support, recognition, and admiration in the most unlikely of places. And it'll completely blow you away. There is an unfound joy in being able to become friends with people who you wouldn't have been able to even interact with because of your country's policies and politics. And case in point, I have made great friends with uh, Ajra and Hamid from Pakistan, and it's been so enriching for me. I mean, with these border, cross border conflicts, it's just always been you never know the other side till you actually go meet them and you spend a wonderful year with them. Your professional and personal lives will overlap a lot. And at the end of the year, you will recognize approximately 500 different organizations just through their abbreviation. <laughs> now, at this point in my speech, I should be quoting Gandhi or Mandela or Martin Luther Jr., but I'm going to mention something that Scott uses every single time in his spiel about Apple Store. He says, talent is universally distributed, opportunity is not. And I remember the first time I heard it a year ago on our first day of orientation. There couldn't be more truth in that sentence that I've come to find out, find out through my experience with my fellow fellows this year. These people you see around you this evening are some of the best minds from across the world. Your investment in our future as donors, as host organizations, as staff, helps us in ways you may not realize today, or you may. But when you see our class in a few years heading into national organizations, winning awards for their work, or maybe just simply toiling away, building grassroots movements to empower millions. You can proudly say that you've been part of a truly global family that will lead the world someday soon. And now for the final minutes of my speech, I was going to invite Kunihiro Shimoji, our fellow from Japan, to sing the Atlas for song. We have one. But, 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 he threatened to punch me if I do that. So I am going to leave you all to enjoy this evening, get to know everyone in this awesome Hear the individual stories, and please join me in giving a round of applause to everyone who's class here. Wow, thank you, Peter. I think it's amazing when people think about the outstanding things, things that our fellows are doing that maybe global leaders are achieving. Underlying it all is the fun, concept of fun. And really, you have to have fun in order to really achieve and inspire others. So thank you, Shishar, for reminding us of that. And uh, thank you for showing us that amazing video. And I also enjoyed the many hairstyles of Shishar <laughs> over the years. <laughs> you always you know, change the seasons, but uh, Shishar changes the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, wonderful, well, thank you. Another, I think, um, element that was so important in the videos is the many friends that were shown. And as Yushar mentioned, it's about the host organizations, it's about the people who have a presence in the community, it's about the donors, it's about those relationships that just keep Atlas Corp growing and really making the experience. So that's why we invited another very special guest to join us this evening. Our keynote speaker is Fabian Cox from the Inter-American Development Bank. Fabian is a senior communications specialist in the Office of Internal, External Relations of the Inter-American Development Bank and has been a longtime friend of Atlas Corp. He was named the youth liaison immediately following the 1995 IDB Israel Youth Forum, which was the first time that a multilateral bank brought together young leaders from around the world to discuss youth development issues. Through the IDB Youth Program, the IDB supports outreach advocacy and project development activities. Fabian, beyond his work at the IDB, is also one of the founders and coordinators of the Inter-American Working Group on Youth Development, and he founded the Benny Katz Institute, an international organization that is dedicated to improving the conditions of children worldwide. And what I think is amazing is that Fabian has joined Atlas Corp before on some of our activities, and it's inspiring the connections he makes with the fellows and how it motivates them to think, wow, this is something, this is something that I had thought of, this is another connection I can make. And even this evening, within five minutes of Fabian arriving, I think we already met four fellows, and he said, wow, the next two weeks we need to be in touch about this, that, and the other thing. And that is what the fellowship is all about. And that is why I'm so excited to have people like Fabian in our network and here tonight to share some of his words as part of our great class. So please join me in welcoming Fabian Cox. I remember around 2006 when Scott had this idea to, you know, to create the Atlas Core. Scott, Kelly, and Jonas, and your entire team, kudos. I mean, congratulations. And, and I, I kind of know what that feels like, coordinating a, a youth leadership program at the IDD. But I want to let you guys in on a little secret that perhaps isn't such a secret. It's you guys. You guys make us look good. It, it, it's this class, it's the class before this, it's, it's the next class. It's some of the leaders that I was talking to, as Abby said a little bit earlier. You guys make our job easy. Because it's incredible young leaders that aren't the leaders of, and I'm tired of hearing it, you know, I, I just came back from a conference where I was speaking. There, there, there's a lot of hot issues happening in the world today, and very close to home, meaning the United States, um, some of the border issues, and some of the young, young people, and, Children uh, from, from Central America, and, and I kept hearing, hearing this word, ninis. Have you guys heard that before? That expression? Those ninis, it's Spanish, it's no nos. The ninis are considered the, the young, young people, and it's unfortunately the majority of the young people in Latin America and the Caribbean that are neither studying or working. Ni estudia ni trabaja. They're neither working. Or. And it's, it's a reality, but you know, I'm glad that there's organizations like Atlas and the IDB, you know, a little bit, a little bit of what we do, hopefully we do a lot more of it is focus on those CCs, the yes, yeses. Because there's young leaders like yourselves that aren't the leaders of tomorrow, they're, they're the young leaders of today, you know, that are coming together and, and learning from each other. And I, I'm learning I, every day. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, that I, have, that I have a job where I can learn from you. And I, I was just sitting here listening and you're a hard act to follow. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I didn't bring a video with, with, with an inspirational song. It was wonderful, but I, I congratulate you because uh, that was a great video. But hopefully, some of the words that I that I could bring upon you guys will be hopefully the start. Even though, and, it, and I'm, I'm fascinated by the two. But I was reading the bios this week and going on your Twitter accounts, and I'm trying to get on your Facebook and trying to learn a lot, a lot about you guys. Because that's that's the way it is. I mean, I used to, when I started in this youth development business in 1994, I was tasked by identifying, they gave me an interesting task. We want you to identify the young leaders of Latin America and the Caribbean. But maybe we want you to be very clear that they can't be IDB bureaucrats like themselves. They have to be young leaders in every walk of life. But the common denominator has to be how they're contributing to their countries, to their communities whether it's from a grassroots, grassroots uh, a municipal, a local, a tribal, or, or international level. And mind you, 1994, 95. How old were you guys in 1994, 95? Another range here is between, if I'm 
Crack 34 to 22, right? So uh, let me tell you something. Historically, 1994, 95, there was no World Wide Web. There was no email. There was no Twitter. So I basically had to go almost, you know, village by village, city by city, trying to find who these young leaders were, you know, and, and what they were doing. And I always say we, we, we had gold mines. We, we discovered an incredible resource. And, and where I'm from, I'm from Argentina, in my neck of the woods, in, in, the, air, in, the, in, in, in the Western Hemisphere, the average age of, of, the, of the entire population of the Western Hemisphere is 27 years of age. There are countries, for instance, like Nicaragua, where over 70% of the population is under 30 years. So it's not just a question of, oh, you know, what, what are we going to do? How, how are we going to do this? But how do we do it now? And, and, and how do we work with young people now? And it's these young, incredible young leaders. And there's buzzwords. I mean, you're going to hear a lot of these buzzwords when you talk about the Washington, you know, lingo and you know, so forth. When I, you know, it's change makers, it's agents of change, it's young leaders. Now it's now it's all about innovation. You know, now it's like maybe we gotta find the innovators. You know, who are who are the young innovators? Find me. We just had our board of governors meeting. The board of governors of the IDB are the ministers of finance and economy of 48 countries. We're a regional development bank, much like the World Bank, but we focus on Latin America and the Caribbean. But it's interesting. China, for instance, at the IDB is a donor. The World Bank is still a foreign member country. Um, we're looking to see if India will join us. Korea is a member of the bank. Japan, most of the European countries, Israel, the United States, Canada, there's 48 countries who are focused on Latin America and the Caribbean. And they said, you know, innovation. You know, who, who are the young innovators? You know, so we had our board of governors meeting. We had to identify 10 incredible young innovators to come and speak. And it's, you know, we have so much to learn. We're constantly learning so much from, from you guys. And I want to, you know, I used to go to conferences and used to go to these conferences and everybody would be like, okay, turn your computers off, turn your phones off, turn your everything. Now you go to the youth conferences, it's like, you know, you don't even see people because you just see the laptops, you know, and, you know, you see the cameras. And that's fantastic because before you might have 500 people in a conference, Whoa. but now you might have 5 million people. You know, you're live streaming, you're tweeting, you're, 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 you're chatting, you're getting the message out. And that's so important. You know, that's that's so important. I, you know, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm going to be sitting with, with, with you guys. I mean, I wish I could have a, a, a program like this. Because you said something interesting, Tishar. You said you're, you're, you're saying goodbye. And that might be so for tonight. But you're actually, you guys are saying hello. Because when I started with our first book, Youth leaders, and we've done tracer studies, and you know, a lot of these leaders that started in '95 are now ministers, are now um, captains of industry, they're, they're leaders in the media, they're leaders in the grassroots movements, they're, they're journalists, they're diplomats. They're still together, and it's, and it's a challenge. And they, they had something that you guys, you know, you guys have something that they didn't, which are these tools of social media, the tools of communicating. So I know, and I know Atlas does a strong effort. Keeping the classes together, and some of the alumni that are here tonight, you know, that are the participating, and that's key. So you're saying goodbye, but you're really not. I hope you're not saying goodbye. I hope, I hope you're saying, you know, what's next, you know, and that's so exciting. You know, and I, when I was thinking about what my remarks, I was thinking about an, an interview that the former Secretary of State, Madeline Albright, did on CBS Face the Nation. I'm not sure you guys saw Face the Nation, but this was in, um, on the 27th on Sunday, I guess, three weeks ago. And you know what she said? She said, the world's a mess. That's what they said when they were asking her about this. She made a current assessment of international affairs on, on Face the Nation, and she went on to discuss a plethora of crises going on in the Middle East, or what was happening to the Pakistan campaign. And she said something that really had me thinking. You know, she said, you know, we're seeing problems for, for a variety of places, and we're seeing problems for a variety of places. And we're seeing problems for a variety of places. And she said, some of it's due to globalization. And she said, frankly, which has an opposite side that's created a lot of nationalism in these countries or places where people feel lost within the facelessness of globalization. So I started to think, Face, facelessness of globalization. You guys, globalization has faces. I mean, here's 16 incredible faces of, of, of globalization. You know, so it's it's not a cakewalk. I mean, we, we're confronted with, with, with issues every day. Um, 
you know, I'm introduced around the world as a youth development specialist. And the first thing I tell people is a youth development specialist. Youth specialist. You know, youth is a stage in one's life. So, you know, most people, I would say 99.9% of the population of the world have been a youth or will be one day. You know, there are youth and health specialists. You have a few youth and malaria specialists. Youth and human rights specialists. Youth and health specialists. I mean, it's a stage in one's life. And I hope that you will remember that where you where you started as as a young leader. I mean, my goodness, especially you're 23, 24 years old. I mean, you know, you, you've got everything in front of you, all of you. But think about what you guys have already done, not just in this past year, but what got you here. You know, to, to become Alice Fellows. So I I I, I commend you. I, I want to thank all of you, congratulate all of you. Thank you for making our jobs a lot easier, you know, because you know it's it, it's incredible the work that, that, that you guys do and that you will do every day. And I want to thank you for giving a face to globalization, you know, to you know, to putting people like this, you know, the, the past secretary who has been a mentor and, and you know, an incredible advisor to me in proving her wrong. You know, that there's two sides to this too, and there are faces to globalization. And they're the faces of this current class of Fellows that are graduating tonight, so I want to congratulate you. I, I hope that we can continue, even though perhaps you're not specifically working in Latin America. I know one of our fellows from here from Japan spent some time in my country in Buenos Aires. Is that true? That you were in, you were in Argentina. <laughs> what do you think? You were there. You were there 2001, right? Yeah, we'll um, you know, but I hope I do get a chance to taste that, that baba menu, and maybe, I don't know what they're serving here tonight, but maybe we'll hear the song, we can get to hear the song. I won't punch anyone, you know, I don't think we'll be punch me. But, um, the Atlas Corps knows where to find me, you can find me, and, and you know, I want to continue this relationship, I want to hopefully open the door of, of the Inter-American region to all of you, you can find me at at Baby Cost, or you can get my email from from Scott Kelly Abbey or, or, or Jonas. But congratulations! I mean, this is fantastic. Enjoy it. You guys, when do you guys all leave? It's like in the next day, in the next couple of days. Yeah. Most of us. And it's and, it, and the program I know is from 12 months to 18 months, right? Which which would be yeah. to some will extend. Some will extend. Well, if you do stick around a couple of days in BC, I mean, I'm here. Um, one block away from the White House at, at, at the IDB. I hope, I hope you come and visit me. And um, congratulations, guys. I mean, this is fantastic. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Fabian. And I love that. I love about not being here to buy, but being about hello and hello to the new opportunity. And also the emphasis to get on relationship. As we talk about Atlas Core does not happen in a vacuum. It's very much about the many aspects and the avenues of Atlas Core that come together and really make us the organization and the experience that we are. So with that, we like to take this opportunity at graduation to recognize some of those special individuals, some of those special organizations that make Atlas Core happen. So with that, I'm going to invite our founder and CEO, Scott Neal, forward to present what we like to call the Atlas Core Honors. So please join me welcome again. Thank you, Angela. A round of applause for Abby. It's always great. Oh, Some yeah. people think she just brings energy to the event, but she brings energy to every day. <laughs> we're very thankful for that. Uh, so one thing we started doing a few years ago was I'm taking this opportunity to not only recognize our graduating fellows, but also other partners who help make it possible. Uh, so, we, is there a certain order? Or is it? Yes, I can go with giving first. Okay, we'll go with well, giving, which actually, there's a good reason to go with global giving first. So, first, we're going to be uh, recognizing uh, the Global Giving Foundation as a distinguished partner in global service. And uh, essentially, this is for a, a host organization uh, that has been a, a great host to many fellows in the past. Uh, give them an opportunity to learn and to serve, uh, to grow in their year, and also contribute meaningfully to the organization. Uh, but uh, Global Giving is a partner truly in every sense of the word. Uh, we stole one of their staff members this past year, which is uh, not the nicest thing to do, I suppose. But, uh, 
Um, but really, from the very beginning, uh, local giving was their grounds for not only to host organization with a fellow from class one, but also as a, a donor in many ways, and funneling uh, uh, funds to us through the Global Giving Foundation. And in fact, um, there's all sorts of talk these days about things like Kickstarter and all the various online giving campaigns. Uh, but Atlas Core started uh, via the Global Giving America's Giving Challenge, where we had 1,700 people give us an average of $30 over a two-week period. Uh, so it won $50,000 we got in the New York Times. And uh, all friends were there for But beyond just being a funder, uh, they've been a great host organization, as I said, from the very beginning. And we want to uh, recognize them for all their work. Uh, even as of as we, today, we're talking to a, a current host about getting them on the Global Giving site. And we you know, received support from the Global Giving Bonus Day this past few months ago, we raised $10,000. And in this past year, and this should be relevant to this class, um, Barry, the CEO of Global Giving, came to us with this idea of bringing fellows from Japan to Global Giving uh, and really two organizations in the United States. So we went with Global Giving to the Fibonacci Initiative, funded by US Embassy, according to the Supreme Council and others, uh, and, and placed two of these fellows, in fact, at Global Giving. And it's that type of partners, again, that really embraces this notion of that. Talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. By working together, we can bridge that gap. Uh, so I'd like to uh, invite Britt up here to receive the award on behalf of Global Giving. Uh, thank you. Uh, Britt's the director of programs there. has been there for a number of years. And thank you uh, on behalf of Atlas Forge to Global Giving for really all of your support. Congratulations, you're the best lottery winner we've had. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to say thank you. We had, we're now on our third and fourth fellow, and um, I think the contributions that they've made to global giving um, have been enormous. And Mari is sitting out here in the audience, and what was really remarkable is her, one of her first big meetings, she came in and said, okay, what I want to do is figure out how to make me obsolete. I am only here a year, so how do we make the role that I have um, part of the everyday um, work that we do? And I think that that's the sort of um, gung ho witness that all of that was for our members we had um, have brought to global giving and have made these very lasting uh, impacts um, on our organization. And that has also sounds like a class person. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. One of their fellows, uh, the second fellow who goes to Global Giving, actually serves on our board of directors now. Uh, so we, we really embrace the alumni and encourage others to uh, pursue that as well. But for many years, Global Giving has been a great partner. So thank you for coming. Uh, next, we're going to uh, give an award for a distinguished supporter in global service. Uh, this award is, is generally intended for uh, donors. Uh, it could be foundations. It could be individuals. We've recognized many people in the past. Uh, this year, we're honored to recognize the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan, particularly the public affairs section in Islamabad. Uh, we uh, received a call in 2012 from the U.S. Embassy in, in Pakistan, in Islamabad, and where they agreed to support five fellows from, from Pakistan uh, over a two-year period. This was huge for us. Uh, it was our second largest grant uh, from the U.S. government. It was probably our you know, third or fourth largest grant ever. Uh, and also really, we thought was an investment and a, an endorsement of the idea that not only can you empower individuals for this experience, but you can actually change societies and countries and, and really strengthen civil society. You in fact see a lot of that uh, in this class here with a large contingent from Sudan and South Sudan, but also from our, our Pakistani fellows as well. Uh, we've now more than doubled our uh, uh, investment in partnership with Pakistani nonprofit leaders We've now supported 11 uh, leaders from Pakistan. Uh, having spent some time in Islamabad, it's, it's truly uh, an amazing city, an incredible country. And I'm so glad that we've been able to uh, work with so many great leaders and been able to place these fellows in such great organizations. Uh, one of the reasons why we're recognizing the embassy, though, is not just because they funded us, and that's nice, 
So they truly uh, approach this through a model of partnership, where they did an amazing job of promoting the fellowship. Uh, I don't know why the USMC in Pakistan has so many uh, Facebook fans, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like, um, and over a million fans, like the USMC in Pakistan, which if you spend time in Pakistan, it's really good. Uh, uh, and, but they promote it on the fellowship because it's like 400 likes of like, you know, 500 people comment, and apparently everyone in Pakistan doesn't find the entire Apple store. Uh, <laughs> Meredith is nodding wildly. It's, uh, above Nigeria, or after Nigeria, the number of candidates? I, I work in Nigeria. Um, <laughs> I, it's up there. I mean, Nigeria and Pakistan are pretty much top two or three. Uh, and that doesn't just happen by itself. It happens with alumni who are engaged in our program. It happens with partners in the field who believe in our work. And in this case, it happens with an embassy that uh, believes in the model. Now, Madina, one of our fellows from Pakistan, said, you know, this fellowship has been a wonderful experience that has changed my perspective about the United States. Whenever someone says anything negative about U.S. citizens, I feel obliged to influence their thinking. But we did not hear these words. Um, <laughs> I remember someone saying that Americans seem like a cruel country. And I cannot resist responding that I've been in so many countries and so far the U.S. is the best because of its people. How can you say such negative things if you never lived there? It's an amazing country with amazing people. Um, and it's just incredible for, I think, our fellows to come and have a new perspective uh, on a country and a society. And equally amazing for uh, the people that they serve with, and the people that they live with, and the people they get to meet here, they get to know Pakistan. Because look, if you haven't met, you know, Ahmed from Pakistan, you maybe you don't know anybody from SWAT, uh, which is a different part of the world. Um, and so, for them to be ambassadors of their countries, of their regions, of the issues that they care about, uh, we're really proud to be a part of that. And we really appreciate the U.S. Pakistan, the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan investment now as well. I went on a little bit longer because I don't think anyone's here from the embassy in Pakistan, so hopefully they'll be, uh, I'm sure they're live streaming it right now, and <laughs> get 10,000 comments on their Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> your program. Um, so, but we really appreciate your support, and uh, a little round of applause for the USA. Oh, great. Fantastic. Uh, so, this is our Distinguished Volunteer in, in Volunteer in Global Service. Uh, we'd like to recognize our volunteers. Atlascore is a small team. It's roughly 10 people on our team. Uh, we do a lot of work. Our team uh, works very, very hard to make things happen. But the only reason why Atlascore really works is we have incredible volunteers. We have over 100 people who serve on our selection board, reading applications. We have uh, you know, dozens and dozens of people who serve as local, local ambassadors. And also our alumni in many ways volunteer in powerful ways. Uh, this award goes to Dimitrio Tinola, uh, really uh, commonly and lovingly known as Tito, uh, who is a class seven fellow from Spain. So Tito is one of our first fellows who served down in Atlanta at Habitat for Humanity. Uh, in fact, we should, I mean, sorry for going to deal with the video, we should have just shown Tito's video. Um, it is on our website, it's that class seven video and this unbelievably fun portrayal of the class. A dancing in the streets of DC. Um, and we show it to often new classes of fellows. One of the fellows is like, are they in the streets? It's so dangerous, but it wasn't dangerous. No, <laughs> no fellows were armed who filmed in that video. Uh, but Tito, uh, like many of the fellows, will come with good ideas and say, you know what, Scott, it looks like your logo was made by a child. And I'm like, actually, it was made by me. And uh, he's like, exactly. Uh, so you need someone who's professional so you can redo your logo for you. That's a great idea, but we can't possibly afford that. It's like, so I will uh, volunteer my time and not just redo your logo, but update your brand, your colors, and fonts, and uh, all these things that this colorblind child cannot do on my own. Uh, so he worked really extensively with Abby and, and other alumni and our board and redesigned our logo. So uh, we created what we call the App Support Brand Identity 2.0. Uh, so you'll see, you, you, Today, you actually will get a little bit of the old logo that Class 13 has there in their, in their hands, and the new logo, which is on the top of your uh, programs for tonight. But it's the same idea, so it's just a, it's a lot better done by, uh, by Tito. Uh, so we want to recognize Tito as an Outsport Fellow, a Class 7 alum, as our distinguished volunteer in global service. So Tito, I do actually think you will be watching this. Thank you for all that you've done for Outsport. Thank you for being uh, such a great alum. Uh, and a round of applause for his work.
and Cubs also share I think public that he was now working with Ashoka in Spain, uh, which is very exciting. I had to work for Ashoka in the past year and Steve, a great organization that's sent us many fellows. We've had four people who work for Ashoka overseas. Even an Ashoka fellow became an Atlas Four fellow, and two children of Ashoka fellows became Atlas Four fellows, including Tina. So congratulations, Tina, on your new job and, and this new work. Thank you, Scott, and congratulations once again to all of our award winners, whether it's here or joining us virtually. And now we are to the moment we've all been waiting for, where we officially recognize our honorees of the evening. So to help us do that, I would like to welcome up a very important member of our staff. Um, this is uh, Meredith Mark, who's our senior program manager. Excuse me. First, uh, first up, we have Ali Murray, Ali, who is from South Sudan and serving, serving at the National Endowment for Democracy. And his supervisor, uh, Xerxes, had to say, over the course of his fellowship, Ali has provided wise counsel how to advance NED's programming in Africa, contributed thoughtfully to the Africa Civil Society Summit, and worked tirelessly to educate others about the challenges facing his home country. Of South Sudan. So, congratulations on the right. All right. And next up, we have Hajra Khan from Pakistan, um, serving at Meridian International Center. And her supervisor, Meg Poole, had to say, from day one, Hajra has felt a part of the Meridian family. Her time here was not only helpful and constructive, but from our perspective, more innovative than most people's careers. Hajra had left her mark on the organization by informing and transforming our program delivery. We will miss you more than you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then Jane from Kenya, um, also known as TJ, who served right here in the Rights Campaign. Um, and her supervisor, Ty, had to say that TJ and Tushar have both helped transform HRC Global from a concept into the flourishing program that it has become over its first year. From their talents as public speakers to grassroots organizers to researchers, Dushar and TJ will no doubt thrive as leaders of the LGBT movement in their home countries. We can't wait to see the transformative work that they undertake in the future. Congratulations. <laughs> is Justin from South Sudan, who is serving at STEM Connector. And his supervisor, Julie Cantor, had to say, um, we have been building a new initiative, Million Women Mentors, and Justin has added maturity and strategy to this growing movement. We value him as a team member, and he has added a lot of value to our business development strategy and communications. Congratulations, Justin. <laughs> Next up is <laughs> um, from Japan, who is serving the National Bureau of Asian Research. And his supervisor, Eric Gillespie, says, what sets Kuni apart is his positive attitude and thoughtful commitment to his team. He is a joy to work with. Congratulations, Kuni. Next 
up, we have Maysoon, a team from Sudan who served at Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric Age Foundation. Um, and unfortunately, could not be here tonight. But um, her whole team has to say that Maysoon has been a welcome addition to EdPath. She has brought immense warmth and insight. Her, her first-hand experience with HIV counseling and testing and conflict setting has been an invaluable contribution to our work. So congratulations, May Soon. Thank you. 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 Th
says, we have been extremely fortunate to have been able to host Suzanne through the Atlas Core Fellowship. She was instrumental in designing the intervention and developing the protocol for a study on using community health workers to increase early diagnosis and treatment of HIV among infants of HIV-infected mothers. Well done. Congratulations, Suzanne. <laughs> Next up is Tembi uh, from Malawi, who served at Agora Partnerships. Um, and her supervisor, Ben Powell, says Tembi was thrust into an incredibly challenging role at Agora Partnerships. Throughout, she proved herself to be a true entrepreneur, navigating choppy waters with grace, equanimity, and a maturity far beyond her years. She has become a part of our family. Congratulations, <laughs> program that has become over its first year, from their challenges as public speakers to grassroots organizers to researchers. Tushar and TJ will no doubt thrive as leaders of the LGBT movement in their home countries. We can't wait to see the transformative work they undertake in the future. Congratulations, Tushar. <laughs> All right, and then next up we have a very fun part of the Alice Ford graduation is class superlatives. These were voted on uh, by the fellows themselves. Staff did not choose these. Um, and so the superlatives we will be handing out are most likely to lead his or her country, most transformed, best motivator, most likely to make everyone laugh, and most outgoing. So for most likely to lead their country, we have Aja. Talk with these uh, inspiring individuals. In addition, I'd also like to remind everyone 
that on Thursday, September 4th, that that was for its annual event. We're going to hold our big, what we call our Go Global Gala at the National Press Club. There's some information in your programs. We invite you all to attend. We're going to have some special Atlas Court features because we know these are amazing leaders in the professional sense, but they're also very talented individuals in the artistic sense. So you have to come on Thursday to find out what kind of artists and talent we have amongst this group because we will be showcasing our fellows. So with that, I do invite you to join me giving one more big round of applause to our honorees, but also to the Vice President of the Community. And I invite you all to join us today. Oh, yes, and one, and with all the graduates and all the um, speakers and honorees, please come to the front. So there will be a quick group picture of everyone that graduated and our award winners and our keynote speakers for this week, too. Did you guys are from a home big photo. Everyone get slow, get real tight. We'll have this be the center, so we need to be one here. You guys come over this way. Oh yeah, hold up your your sign. Your, your, maybe can we have a couple more people on this side? We'll get this Also, graduating fellows should each get a photo. Thanks for watching.